The bottom line on nuclear weapons is that when the president gives the order, it must be followed. There's about four minutes between the order being given and the people responsible for launching nuclear weapons to do so. Hillary Clinton, during the final presidential debate with Donald Trump, accused the Russians of espionage and said Vladimir Putin is hacking American websites to influence the election in favor of Donald Trump. The Russian government has engaged in espionage against Americans. They have hacked American uh, websites, American accounts of private people, of institutions. Then they have given that information to WikiLeaks for the purpose of putting it on the internet. This has come from the highest levels of the Russian government, clearly from Putin himself, in an effort, as 17 of our intelligence agencies have confirmed, to influence our election. Meanwhile, the Obama administration is contemplating a cyber attack against Russia in retaliation for what they say is Russian interference in our election process. I don't buy it. And don't forget, it was Hillary Clinton during a recent campaign stop who said that she would respond to any cyber attacks by Russia with military action. You've seen reports. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. Maybe even some state election systems. So we've got to step up our game. Make sure we are well defended and able to take the fight to those who go after us. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. Donald Trump says getting along with Putin would be a good thing. I mean, who the hell would want to risk nuclear war, right? And let me tell you something, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama better be very, very careful right now because all this talk about war with Russia is extremely dangerous and it puts all of our lives at serious risk. One of Vladimir Putin's most powerful supporters, a man who just won big in a parliamentary election in Russia, makes a menacing prediction. Vladimir Zhirinovsky, an ultra-nationalist firebrand who now leads Russia's third biggest party, warns Americans about their votes. They're voting for peace on planet Earth if they vote for Trump. But if they vote for Hillary, it's war. If Hillary Clinton wins, it will be the last U.S. president ever. Look. Putin, oh, wait, wait. from everything I see, has no respect for this person. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear you won't admit no, that the, the Russians have engaged in cyber attacks against the United States of America, that you encouraged espionage against our people, that you are willing to spout the Putin line, sign up for his wish list, break up NATO, do whatever he wants to do, and that you continue to get help from him because he has a very clear favorite in this race. Look, she's been proven to be a liar on so many different ways. This is just another lie. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear. There is zero evidence that Russia is planning to steal the election for Donald Trump by launching a cyber attack against the United States. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous and it's not gonna happen. Barack Hussein Obama and Hillary Clinton, well, they have formally accused the Russian government of trying to influence our elections by teaming up with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and releasing to the public private stolen emails from the Hillary campaign that exposes Hillary for the evil, dishonest, corrupt, two-faced criminal liar that she truly is. WikiLeaks also exposes election fraud, but not by the Russians, by the Clinton campaign. Oh, and by the way, it's not a conspiracy theory when you have proof. And the only way Hillary can respond to the avalanche of evidence that's against her right now is to accuse Russia 
and Donald Trump for the very same crimes she is committing herself. So she pretends to be mad at Russia and says they are trying to manipulate our elections because WikiLeaks has exposed that she is trying to rig the election. I mean, it is straight out of the Saul Alinsky handbook. Blame your enemy for the crimes that you commit yourself. And now we have even more evidence of widespread planning and scheming for voter fraud by the Clinton campaign. And this time, rather than stolen emails, we have hidden camera footage from the heroes at Project Veritas. The Clinton campaign caught in the act discussing ways to commit voter fraud on a massive scale. Hillary, you are busted. Last night, when we were brought up by Donald Trump at the debates, it was one small step for my team and one giant leap for citizen journalism. I mean, what you saw in the last 48 hours, Twitter, Twitter, by the way, removed me, then reinstated me. Uh, we were trending on Twitter. We're the number one trending video on YouTube worldwide. We're the number one trending thing on Facebook over the last 24 hours. What you are seeing is something I never thought I would say. You are seeing social media and the grassroots in this country more powerful than the mainstream media. We are the bar social media barbarians at the gates. And we have inundated their inboxes. The New York Times is now forced to cover it. The Washington Post was forced to cover it. We are the barbarians at the gates, and we have flooded the mainstream media with interest and attention. And we have become more powerful than the mainstream media. It's truly historical. I've, I've talked about this before, but I've never actually seen it. Last night, Alex, when I was on the, um, the, the red, I was at the debate, and I walked into the press pool, and there were, there were 5,000 reporters, like almost like a red carpet at the Oscars. And they all knew who I was, and they all knew about the story, and not one of them wanted to talk to me or talk about it. Because they weren't reporters, they were repeaters. You were the only, you were the only man, the only journalist really in the arena. They, they, they did not want to talk about it, and, and I also looked at them, and I, and, I, and I didn't know what to say. I said, guys, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. It was truly historical. Uh, situation for Veritas, and um, I'm just so proud of my team. It took us a year, transcripts and, and, and filming, and, and, and a year of investigative, investigative work. But to see these guys resign, the heart and soul of the Democratic Party, that guy, Bob Creamer, was not some low-level guy. He met with the president 47 times. He went to the White House 340 times. He has now resigned. Hillary Clinton is being, Hillary Clinton is being asked about it. And the second video was about how they were busting up people across state lines, uh, they wanted to commit illegal voter fraud with non-citizens. A guy named Cesar Vargas caught on videotape describing how they bust people. The quotes, you can't write them. They, they look like they're from the usual suspects. The guy in the video says, we don't care about the law. We want to win this mother effort. Quote, we've been busting people across state lines for 50 years. You can't make this stuff up. And social media has forced the mainstream media to cover this. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. It's the number one hottest thing. It's, a, it's become a global video phenomenon. And Twitter tried to ban me. Jack Dorsey tried to ban me. And, and another thing, Alex, this is unbelievable. The, the, we had television exclusives lined up with the biggest media television stations, and they all spiked the story. My sources are telling me because they faced retaliation and retribution from a future Clinton administration. And they now are forced to cover it because its groundswell has risen and up. So... I have nothing, I don't know what else to say except that this is historical and I could not have done it without all of you. It is something that I've never seen before, Alex. The media is losing control over the people. When the media loses control over the people, they panic, they get irrational, they, they viciously attack, they assault my reputation, they, they, they have to do damage control. And what you saw was citizen journalism uh, groundswell up to the top and force people to talk about it in the presidential debate, which in turn forced the media corporations, which don't want to talk about it because they face retribution from the Justice Department. And I had, I had, by the way, Alex, I had, I'm not going to say who they were because I, they prom I promised them I wouldn't, but I had people who you perceived to be friendly to us in the, in the big leagues, the big TV stations, come up to me and say, James, I went to war for you. I went to war for you with, with my corporation. And I, I, I wanted to get you on TV. They won't let me put you on TV. 
That is how bad it is. That is what all well, well, exactly. Let's is. remember that as bad as dinosaur media is, there's actually a lot of good people in there. There are some good people. There, there are some one or two decent people. But they pulled me aside. They huddled me on the red carpet last night, and they said, "James, I went to war for you. They will not let me put you on television because Alex." The way it works is these are publicly traded media companies. These are publicly traded corporations. And if they air this stuff, that people in the white It's House, over. Hillary will have to step down. If they air this stuff, the election's over. will not be rigged. What does that mean? What is election fraud? Ha ha, like it doesn't even exist. This is the complete arrogance of these people. Uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory that is uh, being propagated uh, across the country, including in places like Texas, um, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. And I don't think anybody would take that seriously. Right now on Infowars.com. The largest Spanish language network in the United States is claiming that voter fraud never existed. A Univision report claims that there is no evidence that voter fraud in the United States has ever existed or currently exists, and then intersperses clips of Donald Trump saying that the election could be rigged. So this is another example of the worldwide establishment against Donald Trump, the mainstream news against Donald Trump. And then they're up here claiming that water isn't wet, grass isn't green, air isn't good for you, and voter fraud never existed. Trump's warnings about voter fraud are a sample of how political debate has deteriorated is what they're claiming. Yeah, that's an example of how our political discourse has deteriorated. Not all the talk about sex or all the lies that have come out of our politicians for years. An accompanying online article, The Myth of Voter Fraud and Other Strategies to Limit the Minority Vote, by Univision's Jenny Manrique, also argues that no fraud has ever existed and that voting by non-citizens and other significant voting irregularities simply does not exist. And of course, this is right in the face of the report that came out showing that millions of these irregularities 
actually do exist. So as they're up here claiming that rigged elections don't exist, they're trying to rig the election with their propaganda. And we just made a video, it's going to be on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube, we aired it on the Alex Jones show, just illustrating how hypocritical the Democrats are claiming voter fraud doesn't exist. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is October 20th, 2016. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, Hillary Clinton accuses Russia of espionage, claiming they are attempting to rig the election for Donald Trump. Meanwhile, the Obama administration has threatened cyber attacks on Russia, and Clinton has said she would respond to a Russian computer hack with military action. That the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. Also, caught in the act, the Democratic Party and Clinton campaign exposed on camera, conspiring to commit mass voter fraud. Caught again, the Clinton Foundation has stolen millions of dollars from Haiti. New scathing documentation have the Clinton Foundation caught dead to rights. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. You said in a speech today you're afraid this election is going to be rigged. I've been hearing about it for a long time. I hope the Republicans get out there and watch very closely. This new poll is showing a big convention bounce for Hillary Clinton. Following her nomination at the Democratic National Convention, Hillary Clinton now leads it. Donald Trump, 50% to 42%. That's a seven-point jump from last week. You see, he's supposed to just sit there and let him steal it. But he didn't sit there, so they failed. And they think they're going to have another stolen general election in front of everybody at high noon, and we're just going to sit here and go along with it. We're not. I'm going to fight it. Trump's going to fight it. You're going to fight it. Bob Mulholland from Chico, California. I'm a DNC member, thus a super delegate to the National Convention. First of all, it's rigged. And I'm afraid the election's going to be rigged. I have to be honest. And the way we work is that uh, anybody who gets 15% more in election gets delegates. So this election will go all the way to California. Sanders will end up with well over 1,000 delegates, and Hillary will get the nomination. Hillary Clinton, like Debbie said from the start. Hillary Clinton has had every advantage, every break given to her from the very beginning by this Democratic Party. It has been rigged. It is clearly the case that when given truth serum, Debbie Wasserman <laughs> Schultz vastly prefers <laughs> Hillary Clinton to be the nominee, obviously, and... To the extent there are things that can be done institutionally and marginally to facilitate that outcome, they are being done. If Hillary steals the nomination and then she openly is engaged in chicanery and things don't add up with Trump, you have to say it must be thrown out. The political parties choose their nominee, not the general public, uh, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> then why bother Again. holding the primaries? That's a very good question. WikiLeaks has dumped nearly 20,000 hacked emails from the DNC. We're talking about the report of leaked DNC emails showing an effort to undermine Bernie Sanders during the primaries. The American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. When did the press see it as their role to, pro to protect the prerogative of the powerful? Actually, I think that's part of it. And we're not going to recognize Queen Hillary if there's evidence of fraud. And guess what there is? She stole the nomination. I want to thank Bernie Sanders. If he would have just not done anything, just go home, go to sleep, relax, he would have been a hero. But he made a deal with the devil. She's the devil. He made a deal with the devil. The media has created the perception that the voters will decide the nomination, and that's the concept. That's the conflict here. We, we feel like we live in a democratic society. What you're telling me is it's not a democratic society, and your votes don't necessarily matter because it's a democratic representation. Crooked Hillary thinks they're going to pull what they did on Mitt Romney. Mm, lady, isn't going to happen. That's why her campaign head, her chief strategist, said this is dangerous. What Trump's doing. You're right. It is dangerous, isn't it? actually standing up to you. I continue to believe Mr. Trump, Trump will not be president. And I'm telling you, November 8th, we better be careful because that election is going to be rigged. Yes, I think the Vermont, uh, Republican nominee is unfit uh, to serve as president. And I hope the Republicans are watching closely or it's going to be taken away from us. You're going to be hearing a lot more about this, ladies and gentlemen, because Donald Trump's not going to let you be robbed, myself be robbed, 
or him be robbed or his family. There has to come a point at which you say, enough. Lies, lies, and more lies. Hillary stood poised with an air of smug arrogance. Donald stood by, reserved and battle-worn after enduring, along with the American people, a unification of fraud from the globalist bought and paid for mainstream media propaganda machine. The tremendous amount of scathing info from WikiLeaks. Another torpedo to the sinking battleship of the Democrats from James O'Keefe and the Veritas Project and the FBI's announcement that a four-star general will face prison time for charges that are dwarfed by Hillary's email breach of our national security. The stench of BS hung heavy in the air. In a speech you gave to a Brazilian bank for which you were paid $225,000, we've learned from the WikiLeaks that you said this, and I want to quote, my dream is a hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. So that's Thank the you. question. <laughs> That's the question. Please quiet, everybody. Is that your dream, open borders? Well, if you went on to read the rest of the sentence, I was talking about uh, energy. You know, we trade more energy with our neighbors than we trade with the rest of the world combined. And I do want us to have a, an electric grid, an energy system that crosses borders. I think that would be a great benefit to us. But you are uh, very clearly uh, quoting from WikiLeaks. And what's really important about WikiLeaks is that the Russian government has engaged in espionage against Americans. They have hacked American uh, websites, American accounts of private people, of institutions. Then they have given that information to WikiLeaks for the purpose of putting it on the Internet. This has come from the highest levels of the Russian government, clearly from Putin himself, in an effort, as 17 of our intelligence agencies have confirmed, to influence our election. So I actually think the most important question of this evening, Chris, is finally, will Donald Trump admit and condemn that the Russians are doing this and make it clear that he will not have the help of Putin in this election, that he rejects Russian espionage against Americans, which he uh, actually encouraged in the past. Those are the questions we need answered. We've never had anything like this happen in well, any of our elections before. That was a great pivot off the fact that she wants open borders, okay? How did we get on to Putin? Do you condemn any interference by Russia in the American election? By Russia or anybody else? You condemn their interference? Of course I condemn. Of course I can. I don't know Putin. I have I'm no asking, idea. I'm asking I never you, met yeah. Putin. This is not my best friend. But if the United States got along with Russia, wouldn't be so bad. Look, she's been proven to be a liar on so many different ways. This is just another lie. Well, I think when the middle class thrives, America thrives. And so I'm telling you right now, we're going to write fairer rules for the middle class and we are going to raise taxes on the middle class. Is your plan basically more, even more of the Obama stimulus? Well, it's a combination, Chris. And let, let me say that when you inherit the level of economic catastrophe that President Obama inherited. I personally believe that the steps that President Obama took saved the economy. He doesn't get the credit he deserves for taking some very hard positions. I was wondering what happened with my rally in Chicago and other rallies where we had such violence. She's the one in Obama that caused the violence. They hired people they paid them $1,500, and they're on tape saying, be violent, cause fights, do bad things, which is a criminal act, by the way, where they're telling people to go out and start fist fights and start violence. And I'll tell you what, in particular in Chicago, people were hurt and people could have been killed in that riot. And that was now all on tape, started by her. Well, I, I would like to um, say to everyone watching tonight, uh, that I'm reaching out to all Americans, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, because we need everybody to help make our country what it should be. You can put half of Trump's supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> 
I don't know about you, America, but how can we believe a word Hillary says? And why should we? John Bound for Infowars.com. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Farage. Now, Americans have seen a lot of clips. We know what an effective speaker you are. We know what a fearless speaker you are, going right to the seat of power uh, and taking them on, speaking truth to them. I want to ask you what Donald Trump needs to do in this final debate tonight. You see, I think that in the first debate, she had the better of him. Mm -hmm. And that's down to experience. You know, he was stepping up to a level that he'd never been at. But I've been there myself. Yeah. I I've done these big debates and I know that when you're somewhat virginal going into these things, whether we can call Trump virginal perhaps is a matter of conjecture, but, but you know, when, when, you're, when you're going into these things and you've never done them before, they're tough. But I felt by the end of the second debate, he completely dominated. He didn't just dominate her, he dominated the, uh, the people doing the moderators. debates as well, the moderators. You understand, uh, he was in uh, a three against one situation, he, he, yeah. and he called him out on it. And he did, and, and, it was, and he was right to do so. So I think psychologically, he comes to Las Vegas with the upper hand. Uh, she's going to be very nervous going into this tonight. Uh, she's going to play very safe. Um, and I think, he's gonna, I think he will go in and look for the knockout blow. Well, let's talk to the voters for a second. But when I look at what you did in England, I, I, it reminds me of William Wilberforce, the guy who ended slavery virtually single-handedly. It's what you did when you went to the European Union and you said, uh, we're going to get Britain out of the European Union. William Wilberforce, for his entire life, took on the moneyed interests, the multinational corporations that were involved in free trade, free trade of slaves. And so he stopped that slavery. It took him an entire lifetime to do it. The final vote to outlaw slavery occurred shortly after he died. So this is a long-term movement. We can go straight to the seat of power. William Wilberforce has shown that. You showed that to us in Britain with Brexit. We can take them on directly, and we can win. It's a long-term game. They've been in it for a long term. This is a movement. This is what we see being started here in America behind Trump. And it's a movement that you started with Brexit as well. Yes, and, 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 and don't think that this is just America and Britain. This is actually happening across yes. a, a lot of Europe as well, and, and very important that we remember uh, that we've got people in France and Germany and Hungary and Italy and everywhere you go now, people are saying, you know, the global elite have led us very badly, uh, the rich have got richer, the poor have got poorer, this simply isn't working. And the one thing I would say is, you know, whatever happens here on November the 8th, American politics is never going to be the same again. That's right. Yeah. It, it simply can't be, because you're right. Actually, I mean, Trump's not a Republican candidate. He's an independent. Yeah. He's taken over the party. He, 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 the yeah. You're the ones <laughs> for him. I mean, you know, and everyone's run away from him. Yeah. He, he's effectively an independent. Now, if he wins, he wins, and America changes course. If, but if he doesn't win, if the establishment win this time, that is not the end of this story because all those people that, that will have been motivated to stand up and do something, they're not going to go away. They're not going to disappear. Um, so, yeah, I think, ultimately, you know, we've toppled the establishment in the United Kingdom. It took us a very, very long time and a whole number of false starts, but we've done it. And I think that is going to happen in the USA. It's just a question whether it's this year or whether you have to wait a bit. I think we need to sort of start um, get, getting the ghosts of Thatcher and Reagan going on the small man and small woman yeah. who, who want to take risk, set up their own little businesses, and who ultimately create real wealth within the economy and create real jobs. And, and, and that is the opportunity that we now have. We voted for Brexit. Yeah, sure, it's going to take us two or three years to sort it all out. But we've now got a chance to move back towards a genuine capitalist system where people have got a chance of succeeding. And that, I think, didn't you guys used to call this the American dream? That's right. And we used to call it a declaration of independence. We said we're going to take back our freedom, our property, and our self-governance from a small globalist cabal. I would just, uh, I would just finish by saying that whatever happens tonight uh, in this, this big showdown in Vegas, uh, you know, there's a couple of weeks of full campaigning left. And what the Trump campaign need to do 
is to try and get a national conversation going on the very things you and I have just talked about for the last three minutes. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hillary Clinton left us all wondering what the heck is so funny last night. She laughed her way through the debate. Steve Watson wrote an article. It's up on our website, Infowars.com. He wants to know the same thing. We know that Hillary, she was smiling at the mention of ISIS, human rights abuses, mass immigration. Every time Trump would throw out a point, she would meet it with a cackle or a laugh or a grin. Grinning from ear to ear, the tweets coming out of this are hilarious. People are accusing her of having a joker face and wanting to know why she has this evil laugh. This is what Steve had to say about the issue. So he writes, as a range of issues were discussed at last night's final presidential debate, viewers couldn't help but notice one thing. Hillary Clinton was grinning a lot. Now, she's got a creepy grandma grin. It's almost always on her, even when Trump and the debate moderator asks her serious questions. Uh, questions relating to issues for, like human rights, the spread of ISIS, her, uh, you know, mishandling of money, pay to play. It was all met with this crazy cackle and the tweets coming out of this. I just want to read a couple of these to you because they are so funny. Um, and people are wondering the same thing. We're wondering it here in InfoWars. Viewers are watching it as well, uh, going, what the heck is up? So uh, major tweets writes, uh, Hillary Clinton smile haunts my dreams. Another person writes, well, Hillary Clinton gives us the Joker smile after Donald Trump says she let ISIS into the country. Not not good optics, hashtag evil. Every time I see Hillary Clinton smile in a debate, I genuinely get scared. And then somebody else writes, going as nasty Hillary for Halloween, complete with creepy gra granny smile. So that smile, that cackle always with her, it seems so disingenuous to everybody looking at it, except for her, of course. Secretary Clinton, during your 2009 Senate confirmation hearing, you promised to avoid even the appearance of a conflict of interest. <laughs> with your dealing with the Clinton Foundation while you were Secretary <laughs> of State. But emails show that donors got special access to you. Those seeking grants for Haiti relief were considered separately from non-donors, and some of those donors got contract, government contracts, yeah, taxpayer friends. money. Can you really say that you kept your pledge? And to they that put Senate the money back in the foundation. Isn't what she, she, she didn't just keep 94%. The little bit she gave to aid, they had to pay her back with the money. Why isn't it what Mr. Trump calls pay to play? Well, everything I did as Secretary of State was in furtherance of uh, uh, our country's interests. Oh, yeah, and sure. Our Wallace has been the fairest yet, but he's still not fair. I give him a. Uh, he's, he's like 55, 45. I'm thrilled to talk about the Clinton Foundation because it is a world renowned. You're charity. thrilled. What a piece and of I trash you are. Your own daughter said you were killing you know, people in Haiti. For the rest God, of the debate, I, I know I don't have Get her with Chelsea. that. But just briefly, uh, the Clinton Foundation. Let's put some articles on screen. For 11 million uh, Chelsea saying we're killing people. World with HIV/AIDS to afford treatment. Oh my God! They ship for 10 years blood out of out of their hospitals and out of their prisons, America. knowing it had HIV and hepatitis. Famous blood scandal. Look up the Clinton blood scandal. Nobody knows about it. And she's talking about fighting HIV and AIDS. I cannot handle this anymore. Go back to him. A specific question went to pay for play. Do you want to well, talk about that? Well, but there is no evidence. No one's here with the HIV blood. Hit her. Good work. Hit her. Hit her. Hit her. And it's a criminal enterprise. And so many people like Mr. Trump's face. It's a criminal enterprise. Yes. Saudi Arabia giving $25 million, Qatar, all of these countries. You talk about women and women's rights? Yes. So these are people that push gays off business, off buildings. These are people that kill women and treat women horribly, and yet you take their money. So I'd like to ask you right now, why don't you give back the money that you've taken from certain countries that treat certain groups of people so horribly. Why don't you give back the money? I think it would be a great gesture well, because she takes a tremendous amount of money and you take a look at the people of Haiti. I was in a little Haiti the other day yes, in Florida up. and I want to tell you they hate the Clintons because what's happened in Haiti with the Clinton Foundation is a disgrace. Well, I can break now. And you know it and Trump they know is looking it, at flying to Haiti this week. Secretary well, Clinton. I want to break quickly, that here now. We um, at the Clinton Foundation spend 90%, 90% of all the oh my that god in verse reality they keep 94 that's even the washington post country. i'm very Whoa. proud of the highest rating from the watchdogs that uh follow what, Schnopes, a fat lady with a cat? i'd be happy to compare what we do with the trump foundation which took money from other people wow a six foot portrait wow. of donald i mean who does that uh, it, it even just politico admits they ripped off 
But when it comes to Haiti, even the Haiti emails the from Chelsea, she is the atmosphere. biggest liar. The earthquake. They give four percent of their own money. Devastated. Oh my God! I don't Bill and this. I have been involved in trying to help Haiti for We're many years. We're raising money again. We want to help you so much. We didn't have sex with that lady either. Catastrophic uh, earthquake and all of the terrible problems the people there had. We've done things to help small businesses, <laughs> agriculture, and so they much else. And we're going to keep up. working to All help right. Haiti because it's an important <laughs> part of the American <laughs> we, Riots would you know, start when we mention the Clinton name. We have HD video. I'd like to mention. If you love black people, why are you destroying Haiti? Why did you, Mr. Clinton, stop them? from the rice that they were producing in Haiti to feed themselves. In this environment, the most important thing all the rest of us can do is give even small amounts of cash for food, medicine, water, and for shelter. You've got like the head of the Senate saying that the Clintons tried to bribe him. You've got local leaders saying how they, the Clintons do nothing, how they just collect all the money. And it just brings home these people are damn evil. Severe injury. We're his only way out of here. And uh, we're about to put him on our plane. The U.N. helicopter taking off is empty because they don't do evac. This is what's so frustrating here. No government help. That won't bring in some food. But they won't do anything interesting. Like help an individual. But we're getting him out of here. And an old man on the stretcher with a spinal cord injury. And uh, uh, America needs to know what's going on here. This is an absolute disaster. And Obama sent in six or seven helicopters. They're all going home in a few days. And uh, people are starving. They don't have no water. It's injuries. This person was injured in a hurricane, which was seven or eight days ago. And we're just now getting him to a hospital. So uh, uh, anybody who cares about this, cares about the Haitian people, uh, uh, you, you need to, to, to call your congressman. You need to call your media because this is a completely ignored story. A million people on this peninsula in western Haiti uh, without water, without food, without medical care. And uh, uh, very, very little was done, being done by the, the, the international community and by, by the American government. And so it, I, I saw only four stories in the entire media yesterday on the Haitian uh, program. There's a million people in distress. This is important. Well, you've got the Clinton Foundation here, but guess where they're at? In Port-au-Prince. Willing and dealing at the Marriott, yeah. you know, trying to put money in their own pockets. Meanwhile, you got people here with their legs snapped, fractured backs, trying to get help, trying to get out of here, trying to seek the medical attention they deserve and they should have. And these people are more concerned with putting money in their own pockets and benefiting their lives and their families later on down the road. When you have people here, let me say, this guy's an EMT and he's been doing this for quite a while. Uh, how much uh, Clinton fund money have you seen actually put into the hands of Haitians? Absolutely nothing right now. Because um, we've been here since what? Last Wednesday? Yep. We haven't seen nothing yet. And most of the Haitians consider Hillary Clinton a thief. Would that be an accurate description? I would say yes. Yeah. Because that's what they, I mean, that's, it's, it's been going, it's been going on for pretty, quite a while. So, so January 2010? Yep. Yeah. And before that. So this is it. They already, they're already digging their fingers in Haiti before it happened. And then when that catastrophic event took place, they seized it, jumped in here, and then took a hold of that natural disaster and then use it as a way to benefit themselves. And that's what they always do. Yep. And we have absolute proof that the Clintons have put nothing into Haiti other than getting a gold mine for Hillary's brother and, a, and, and, and their rich friends. I don't see major organizations down here. I don't see major organizations out in that area. We're the only ones out there. Hero is literally the only one out there in Damari doing this work. And Damari is one of the most affected areas where the hurricane went through and devastated the entire town. So we have a bunch of people without homes, without food, without shelter, and in need of medical assistance. So that in itself should be screaming out to the world that, yes, we need eyes back on Haiti because we can't do it alone. We desperately need help. You know, what's amazing, aside from some, some uh, small-scale U.S. military aid uh, and some other Christian organizations, you know, I mean, I, yesterday I looked around and I thought, I wonder where the religion of peace is at. You know what? Why aren't these guys down here helping out? Uh, where's the Clinton Foundation that's collected hundreds of millions of dollars in the earthquake and dispensed 
you know, if these Haitian people were lucky, they got 10 cents on the dollar out of that. And, you know, there, there's just, uh, and, I, and I think the large, the large part of it is really to blame on the media. The media hasn't, hasn't covered this story. I mean, this, this country's devastated. Haiti Air Ambulance, a great organization with a beautiful helicopter uh, ambulance staff wants to come here and take our patients, but they can't go round trip on one tank of gas. Okay, the only people they can get gas from out here is Munista, Munista, and they won't sell them gas, and because they need it for their operation. They won't let us do medevacs on the U.N. planes. They won't let us do medevacs on the uh, army planes. The, the, the army won't let you do medevac, right? The army won't let it. They won't come here and take our people. Tell us what the Clinton party's done for you. <laughs> Where's the Clinton Foundation? Where's everybody? I could be anywhere in the world doing anything I want to do. Uh, I wouldn't trade any of it for, for this experience. Uh, I've been here 10 days now. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to leave. Uh, I, I can't leave. People that are depending on me for food and me only. Uh, I tell you, it's humbling, but it's the most satisfying thing I think I've ever done in my life. The joy. Of, of holding a little baby and putting putting them on the plane and knowing that we're going to take them to a life saving operation. Now, I, I tell you this: it's a thrill. Uh, the negative is is the is is being an eyewitness to the to the corruption in the Hillary Clinton uh, program, the, the Clinton Foundation. Uh, we we go back to to what can our listeners do? They need to make this stuff go viral. Gary and Diane have been down here with their own. Caravans. They came down with three planes, and we've been providing help to Dan Marie, Lekai, and Jeremy. They have been the only ones able to distribute to about 3,000 people, um, basically food, water, oil, the basic needs for any human being. We don't see the Red Cross. We haven't seen the Clinton Foundation doing anything in Haiti. We are the only ones medevacking those trauma people and Dan Marie. We're the only flights landing there, getting people out that need to be medevac. Hillary, let me give you a word. First of all, I'm wealthier than you are. And here I am with my money, my hands, I'm flying aircraft into these dangerous situations. The, the head of the Senate here at Haiti said that of the billions that you collected for these children here, only 2%. 2%. If you are a grand level thief, and the world needs to know about it, and Americans need to know about it. If we dare trust you with anything, we're fools. And you know, you've proven it over and over again, but Haiti, you can't explain this away. Look around, you see any Clinton fun trucks or airplanes? It's in here, and I'm an eyewitness. And you know, you have the audacity to act as if you care about people. And I know you're a psychopath. And you probably get a kick out of the fact that you're getting away with this grand theft. And it's because the media, the mainstream media in America, is your lapdog. I don't know whether they're afraid of you or they buy into your nonsense, but I'm not afraid of you. I'm going to challenge you everywhere I can. And I'm asking the hundreds of thousands of people who are watching this to, to get involved, get the word out, get this viral. Hillary Clinton is, it, with what you've done in selling state secrets, selling uranium to our, to our so called enemy, picking a fight with Russia, taking us to the verge of World War III, media doesn't tell us about it. You are the most wicked person on this planet. And every time I put a, 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 a food in the mouth of these children, I think of what a creepy witch you are. Okay? So damn you. Okay? This is what you should be doing, but you don't even understand. You're a psychopath who gets power off of getting away with this. And I understand that. You don't care what I'm saying. The American people that are going to go vote, especially the black Americans. These are black people here that I'm taking care of. The black Americans need to realize that you use them for their vote, and then you throw them away. You keep them America like Detroit and impoverished because you have power and control over black Americans. Shame on you. They're waking up. I'm not a great Trump fan, but he's not bought and paid by the elites, not bought and paid by the shadow government. Hillary, we're on to you, and we have time to, to wake the American people up.
and, and, and gets you out of our lives once and for all, you miserable wretch. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, have a blessed evening. We'll see you back right here tomorrow. Good night.